It's one of the major things that people will feel when they first start Methylene Blue is a boost in your mood. People will typically start feeling a little brighter. Their, um, their motivation will be a little bit greater. And it's been studied actually in, in multiple different contexts in, in the mental health world. There are studies in bipolar, in depression, for example, and seeing that Methylene Blue, even as a monotherapy, as a singular uh, compound used can be very helpful in these cases. And I, and I think part of this is related to the neurotransmitter ecosystem that's changing, uh, that's for sure. But we also know that a lot of mental health disorders, especially bipolar, which is pretty well described, it, this is a significant amount of mitochondrial dysfunction as well that's, that's ongoing that I think methylene blue is having a, a potential impact on as well. So at, at, if we go really molecular, at the site of this, the root of this, is it's improving mitochondrial efficiency. Right, and it does it in about, uh, there's so many different ways that it does this. We can go through all of them in significant detail if you'd like, but I think it's always good to give the context here of you know, there are so many mitochondria in our brain. We sometimes, you know, when I was in seventh grade, and I'm sure you were even in Australia, like you learn that a cell has a nucleus, it has cytoplasm, it has a mitochondria, it has Golgi bodies as reticular, um, end endoplasm reticulum. It's a cell membrane, which is really the brain of the cell, to be honest. So we, we just, you get this picture of this one mitochondria in the cell, but that's actually not how it works. There are some cells in our body that have thousands of mitochondria per cell, and there's other cells in our body that have one or even zero. So our red blood cells, for example, have zero mitochondria. They used to have mitochondria, but when they get bigger and they get more mature, they actually l release their mitochondria. And so there's more room to carry oxygen on your red blood cells. So the places where we have the most mitochondria per cell, um, our brain is actually number two. Number one is actually ovaries and sperm. So to make a baby requires a lot of energy. So our sperm and our eggs specifically have tons of mitochondria per cell. And so you have your, your, your gonads, as we call them, your sperm and your eggs, and you have your brain, your heart, your liver, your musculoskeletal tissue has the most mitochondria per cell in reserve so that you can run away from something that's chasing you if you needed to do that, for example. So why does the mitochondria start breaking down? Well, I guess before you get there, like what happens when the mitochondria don't work in those places, right? So in our, if we can't, you know, have a baby, infertility rates or fertility rates themselves are, are really, really an issue these days and going and getting worse. Brain function and all the ways that we'll describe, I'm sure today, are is significantly degrading for anything from, you know, memory to recall to cognitive impairment from an executive function perspective, uh, from brain fog and fatigue and those kinds of things and cardiac issues, liver issues, you know, exercise induced fatigue. So, um, why is all this happening? Because the mitochondria aren't working very well. And there's about five or so things that are really the reason for that. There's multiple different things within these categories. The main cause of mitochondrial dysfunction is insulin resistance. So if you have too high of a blood sugar on a regular basis, your mitochondria are not going to be very happy and they're not going to work very well. Toxins in our environment, everything from the food to the water, to the light, to the EMFs and everything else, these are also causing significant impact on our mitochondria. Infections are causing significant issues on our mitochondria. So this could be a viral infection. This could also be a post-viral issue, like you've had COVID, for example, and you still can't move, uh, your brain doesn't work. This is a mitochondrial issue as well. And then you have medications that also cause mitochondrial dysfunction as well. So you have toxins, you have insulin resistance, you have medications, you have uh, infections. You have so many different things that are affecting sort of this sort of this common denominator, which is your mitochondria, which is um, which is really important, obviously, for you to be making energy. And that's why we have so many issues uh, with you know with symptomatology, as I described. Yeah, and it's actually, I, do you know the statistics of how many people currently have, I mean, in the US alone, have mitochondrial dysfunction? What I've read and what we're looking at here is about 94% of the United States population. So only 6% of the United States population is metabolically healthy. And what I mean by metabolically healthy is that people can take in the food that they eat make energy efficiently from the food that we intake, and then also are able to detox or to regulate the processes that are involved when we make energy. So just like if you are a car, you need gasoline for a car, say. There is waste products that come from the gasoline itself. There are quote unquote waste products from energy generation in our cells. So we make energy, something called ATP. We make carbon dioxide, which we breathe off mostly. And then we have water, 
And then we have also these other things called ROS, reactive oxygen species. And so some of these in small amounts are very important for signaling, but in large amounts, they can cause significant stress on the system and cause deterioration. And this is a major issue that we see across the spectrum of health and so much more we can do to help people. And what's super amazing about methylene blue is that it can improve mitochondrial efficiency, not only from the energy production side of things, but also from the detoxification side as well. And the repair side? Obviously. Yeah, so, yeah, so the detox side is what I mean by repair side, in the sense that if you have too much reactive oxygen species, the system starts breaking down in various ways. And what methylene blue can do is it can act directly as an antioxidant. And as a result of that, it can neutralize some of that stress, that ROS that can build up over time, especially if we're chronically sick and chronically inflamed and have chronic complex medical issues. Like you're gonna deplete your capacity to have enough antioxidant capacity itself to, uh, to neutralize the effects of making energy, which breaks the whole cycle down.